From Boston University and BU Alumni Relations, welcome to Proud to Be You Around the World. I'm your host, Jeff Murphy, and this season, we're taking the podcast on the road to meet some of our most interesting and accomplished alumni navigating life and careers in cities across the globe. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome guest host Kati Roysha to the podcast. Kati and I work together on the alumni relations team where she oversees our alumni networks around the world with a special focus on our international alumni. Kati, thanks for hosting today's interview. Take it away. Thanks for the warm welcome, Jeff. Today, my guest is Shraddha Bansali. Shraddha graduated from the Questroom School of Business in 2014. Since then, she returned to Mumbai, India, where she opened her first business, Candy and Green, which is a vegetarian restaurant and a bar centered around clean eating and local ingredients. In 2018, Forbes India took note and named her one of their 30 under 30 in the food and hospitality sector. Shraddha is one of our over 1,300 alumni living in India, and she joined me on the podcast to share the remarkable story of following her passion and pursuing her entrepreneurial dream, even amidst the current pandemic. Thank you for being here, Shraddha. I feel so fortunate to talk to you today. To get us started, I'm wondering if you can paint a picture of what it was like for you to grow up in Mumbai. Can you share some of that story with us? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me, Kati. This is, um, you know, it's, it's really special because uh, I was just thinking about uh, uh, my time back in university. And right now, like, you know, a lot of what everyone is doing is, you know, like going through throwbacks. So this is really special that I get to do this, especially um, during this time where like the whole world is practically in lockdown. So, um, yeah, uh, growing up, I was born and raised in Mumbai. Um, my parents are both Indian and uh, I grew up in Nepensi Road, which is uh, in the south area of Mumbai. I went to um, an international school and um, I have a younger brother as well. Uh, growing up, um, we come from a business family. So my father had um, a business. Uh, he was a di- he is a diamond merchant still, but now he's I guess retired. But that was his business. So um, you know, very product uh, uh, industry related. And um, one thing that we saw uh, very early on in our lives is I saw my dad sort of burn out. You know, he didn't enjoy what he did as much. So um, I think around the time we were in uh, late high school, my father actually um, switched his career to a creative profession. He started uh, collecting art and buying lands, uh, banks of land, which was so interesting and so different. And um, that's when, you know, he started talking to us basically about following our passions. Otherwise, it sort of drains you out. So, um, you know, from the time I was around 15 years old, I took that very seriously and I really started to think about what are the things that really excite me. And um, I just realized I love I love food. I love restaurants. I love going out. So um, ever since I was 15, I just kept telling anyone who would hear or ask me what I wanted to do that I'm going to open a restaurant. And then while applying for universities, BU is my top pick because you know, it has guest room, which has a great business program. But then um, Shah, which is one of the best hospitality programs in the country. So I was just sold. And since I was 15, I was pretty focused on the fact that I wanted to open a restaurant. Wow, that's amazing to know so early on. <laughs> so who was doing the cooking in your house growing up? And what inspired you to go into the restaurant business? You know, Katya, I'll be very honest with you. Um, my mother is a great cook. I enjoy flavors and I I enjoy creating an ambiance and sort of orchestrating an atmosphere. I don't see myself as someone that's just in the kitchen. Um, And I was very clear about that. I was very clear that I didn't want to be the chef in my restaurant, but I wanted to be the person who created that experience. You know, when I was younger in India, eating out is not like how it is in America, right? You all eat out sometimes Mm -hmm. as a necessity. In India, you only eat out on special occasions or um, to celebrate something. And now that's changing, but I'm talking about when we were growing up, right? When you went out, you would like always get dressed up and it would be like, there would be so much emotion and, you know, so so much around that experience of just going out. And I guess I just wanted to create that with people and I wanted to share that with them. Like I wanted to be 
a part of people's celebration or a part of people's happiness and that's why i started because uh, uh i just i just liked that ambiance and the vibe of going out when we were younger in terms of what really inspired me my mom is a great great cook like i said and that i think spoiled us a lot when we were young you know we were very quick to be like well no this is not that nice and i think we uh, developed a great uh, you know palate because my mom would cook from all over the world so i think she definitely uh, you know had a really key role to play in my liking for different cuisines and she also is into gardening so in our uh, in our flat in mumbai she you know since we since i can remember she's always been growing like fresh herbs and produce and you know been using that in the food so very early on i've sort of been introduced to this whole lifestyle that's fantastic i can totally see how you had all the right ingredients for your future career as a restaurant owner with your dad being an entrepreneur and your mom having such incredible talent to nourish you i love that you wanted to go into hospitality to create more of these beautiful moments did it take you long to shop around for a university and how did you decide that bu was the right choice you know you're going to find this really funny so generally when people apply to universities they at least apply to like maybe five six you know um, as backup but um my parents were uh, a little apprehensive about not apprehensive to send me abroad but i'm their first child like that was going to go um, you know out of the country to study so they weren't very keen on it so they were like you know only if you get into your top pick should you be going otherwise you know there are like great schools here which is true so i only applied to three universities bu was my top pick for obvious reasons I was very clear as I get well if I don't get into these I'm not going to study abroad I'm going to you know maybe study closer to home or take a hospitality club course you know um somewhere else in Mumbai and yeah I was very focused that I wanted to go to BU and I think I'd met one of the reps at my high school and I had chatted with her about this as well you know and she was the one that was sort of explaining to me how I could do a hybrid like business and hospitality program Wow, it sounds like we have to give a lot of credit to that admissions officer. I'm really glad that all of this worked out because it sounds like there was a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. So, give us a little bit of the feel for what it was like for you to be on campus. Oh, so um I I still remember my first day. Uh, actually, you know what? A funny story. I actually had come to Boston, BU, 4 years before I actually even a thought I was ever going to apply my cousin brother graduated from Kestrom as well and I had attended his graduation ceremony it was uh, it was in the arena in a ganas arena i believe i remember that it was such a crazy feeling cuz i had never seen so many people like you know doing a graduation ever before because you know our universities and colleges we don't have such big graduation ceremonies so i was really blown over by it and i remember seeing the bu campus and i was like oh wow this is like this you know is is totally my vibe but i didn't really think of it and then i remember coming my first day as a freshman i was staying in warren towers and i remember the first time i walked to west and i saw the arena and it looked so different than i'd seen it that day and i think that's something that really stayed with me that like one of the most profound memories i have of my first day at bu that's wonderful that you still remember that i'm also wondering what classroom experience was like can you give us a little bit of the experience that shaped you I think that staying away from my family being in a classroom with people that didn't speak the same way as I did didn't look similar to me it was very intimidating I'll be very honest with you I think for the first 6 months I was really intimidated to talk in class I felt like I sounded different I looked different so I was I was very apprehensive to raise my hand even though I had an opinion I used to keep it to myself but i think the one thing that my experience in the classrooms really gave me is the confidence to put my opinion across you know and i think that that's the one thing that i will always cherish like even in team discussions initially i would uh, you know uh, i remember that i probably wouldn't talk much you know during the team meeting but you know maybe then include it in my part of the presentation or you know write it down but i wouldn't actually express it 
And I think that, you know, the more I spent time and um, the more confident I got in my education and my abilities, it just gave me the confidence to speak up and express myself. And I think that my entire BU experience, like uh, the four years I spent there, really transformed me in, in a way that I can get my thoughts across more cohesively than I could before. It also taught me to be, uh, you know, it, it taught me to be a lot more open-minded. Well, you know, growing up in a city where mostly everyone looks, talks, acts like you, well, you get one point of view. But I remember so many times in our different classes, like we had to take all these elective classes, you know, to fulfill those credits. So I remember there were so many times when I took these classes, my point of view was challenged, you know, from the way I had, I was used to thinking about things. So I thought that was really interesting because uh, never before has the way I thought been challenged in such a way. So that's a big, big takeaway from my entire experience there. That sounds fantastic. I'm totally in awe that you already gathered all these life ingredients and the skill you needed to speak up and build your own career. What did you discover outside of the classroom and what was your experience as a student in Boston and in the U.S.? Actually, I have to credit a lot of my, uh, you know, my entire restaurant concept to Boston because uh, when I moved to Boston, that's when this whole wave of veganism was really taking America over. There were a lot of these vegan restaurants popping up all over Boston. And as a vegetarian, well, I got super excited, right, because I have so many more options at vegan restaurants. So I started visiting them and that's when I sort of realized what kind of restaurant I would be, what kind of business person I would be. Because before this, I just knew I wanted to open a restaurant. I didn't know what kind of restaurant I wanted to open. But I, I remember every time I would go out, there were so many of these vegan cafes in Boston that I would go to. And the one thing I really appreciated was the way that they cooked their produce. And the one thing I always felt India lacked, even though we have a 30% vegetarian population, which is the largest vegetarian population in the world, I feel like our produce is so underrepresented in our foods, you know? It's always like paneer or cheese or extra masala. I feel like, you know, it's almost to the point that you're trying to make up for the fact that it's vegetables. But when I ate at these restaurants in Boston, it opened up my mind. I'm like, you know, just the same way, like meats have different types of cuts and textures and ways of cooking. Like that's possible for vegetables. And the first time I discovered that was at this vegan cafe in Boston. And it blew my mind. I was like, vegetables can be like the star of a dish. They don't need to be sides. And that's when I decided that that's what my whole mission was going to be when I opened a restaurant. And that's exactly what I held true when, when I opened Candy and Green. Like, that's our motto to date. We don't have any uh, cuisine that we focus on. We're super ingredient centric. We only cook local seasonal produce. And each and every ingredient is sort of thought of in a different light, you know. I want, I, I want, you, I want to focus not only on taste, but also texture. And this is something that um, my experience in Boston really taught me. You know, um, it, it, it really changed my sort of relationship with my eating habits. I love that you had so many eureka moments that changed your life while you were in Boston. So in 2018, you were named one of Forbes 30 under 30 in hospitality and entrepreneurship industry. Congratulations on seeing such a high accolade. Can you take us on that journey on how you get there? You told us a little bit about your vision for what you wanted your restaurant to be, but how did you actually make it happen? So I'll be very honest with you. I was very naive. I spoke to a lot of people in the restaurant industry and I cannot tell you the number of times people warned me and they were like, you know, it's a really difficult industry. Don't do it. And, you know, you just brush it off, you know, because you're naive and you're young and you're like, well, I, I can do anything. You know, you have all the energy in the world. So I was so determined when I graduated to open my own restaurant. So, you know, I, I had a couple of internships lined up in New York, but I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to open my restaurant. In my mind, my restaurant was going to open like as soon as I got back. And I just jumped into this whole like, you know, space finding mode. I was looking for a restaurant space, you know, that really spoke to my concept and things like that. And, uh, you know, honestly, I couldn't find anything. And it took me three years to even sign a lease, it was it was actually crazy. So while I was looking for a restaurant space, I took up a job with a couple of these five star hotels in Mumbai because I wanted to get to know the industry because I knew about it like 
practically, but I actually wanted to get some hands-on experience. So, you know, I joined uh, two of these five-star hotels in this three-year period to sort of, you know, get connected to top chefs and, you know, get to know people in the industry, which was great. So in the morning, I would go to my job and then in the evening, I would go hunting for properties. Finally, I think after three and a half years, I found a space by a stroke of absolute luck. And that space is now Candy and Green. A friend was actually just, you know, I was I was having, I think, lunch or dinner with her. And she was like, uh, oh, you know, I heard that there's this restaurant that's shutting down in the space. They're looking for new tenants. You know, she told me about the space in the area. And I was like, you know, I don't think I, I don't know what the rents are, but I think it'll be too expensive for me. But then, you know, I sort of spoke to my dad about it. And he's like, well, go see it. You know, like, what do you have to lose? I went and saw it. And I absolutely fell in love with the space and it had a rooftop and it had a space for a farm, which none of the other spaces I saw had. So I guess all my stars aligned that one day after three and a half years of looking and uh, yeah, I opened Candy and Green. I took only three months from the time I signed the lease to get the restaurant up and running, which is, I think, quite unheard of. But I'd also been planning for this restaurant for like three and a half years, right? I knew like the menu I was going to do. I knew the people I was going to hire. I had made all my lists. Like I knew who my contractor was going to be. I knew my interior designer. I knew what I wanted, right? So yeah, in three months, we were up and running. And uh, I very distinctly remember there was um, the tank area in the terrace. Okay, so, so societies here, they have tanks, right? Where they keep their overhead water tanks in case of water shortages. So that tank area was right next to the seating rooftop. And that tank had like so many of these frayed wires and, you know, like there were like rats running around. It was disgusting because, you know, it was completely like nobody was there. So um, I spoke to the society and I was like, well, you know, would you mind if I look looked after this and cleaned it and, you know, did something nice here because it's sort of an eyesore and it's on my property. So they were like, OK, you know, you can take if you can take good care of it, go ahead and take it. So um, since that space was super dead, we just decided to grow a couple of plants there that, uh, you know, we could use uh, in our kitchen. And that's how our rooftop farm started. Wow, that's cool. How did you come up with a name like Candy and Green? Sure, there's a story. So um, Candy and Green, actually Candy comes from Bridge Candy, which is the area that the restaurant is in. And um, Green comes from the fact that we grow our own greens. So that's how we initially came up with this idea. But then, um, you know, we shot it down because we're like, well, you know, that's too simple. And then uh, actually, if you come to my restaurant, there's a wall in which I've written my entire brainstorming session of what I want my restaurant to be. And that's actually how I came up with the name of Candy and Green. So, you know, I wrote down that I want a menu that's evolving, that changes every season, but has a consistent food quality. I want food that is indulgent, but at the same time wholesome. I want dishes on the menu that have a global appeal, but are locally sourced. So there were a lot of these opposite words, but they came to the same point. So that's what Candy and Green is. It's the sum of your two hedonistic halves. Um, so two seemingly opposite things that uh, create perfect harmony. And that's what Candy and Green is. What a beautiful concept. Do you feel you made any mistakes along the way? Or were there any crossroads when you weren't sure of which directions to go in? Oh, absolutely. It's not been, you know, um, while saying this, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, you know, all this sounds so easy and rosy and I wish it was, but absolutely not. This was a very, I won't say very tough journey, but I was very young and naive and I've made a lot of mistakes that I wish I could go back and tell my youngest. Actually, you know, I wouldn't because I think I've learned a lot from those mistakes. And I think that uh, with being naive, you're also very over enthusiastic at times and you over promise things. And also certain times you try and overcompensate. And I did all of these things initially, you know, when I was opening a restaurant you know I was I still remember one of the biggest things for me was being able to handle criticism I think that uh, when I opened Candy and Green's doors everything was so personal to me everything I felt like was a reflection right because I thought that this entire concept is shut down a plate it's an extension of me so every time that there was any criticism I took it very very personally which is something I really wish I didn't do and I wish I took it more constructively and really you know because this not only like disturb my mental health but it also obviously didn't help me in a business sense also you know when you're young and you have all this fashion and you know you, you tend to get very very disheartened quickly I remember when I was looking for a space for three and a half years that was a very very low point in my life because I was literally you know 
doing this job and looking for properties and i i just felt like you know i, I didn't know what i was doing i was in a very like it was it was like a, a period of lull in my life where i like nothing happening you know i wish i could just tell myself to be a little more patient back then because there were so many times where had it not been i think for my family or my mentors i would have definitely jumped the gun and signed the wrong place so that definitely something also in terms of patience but thank god i didn't make that mistake and thank god i had good mentors and that you know my family is very like we're very close and we're very actively involved in each other's lives so we discuss things so thankfully i didn't make that because that would have been a very very expensive decision another thing that i wish i was more prudent with my uh, expenses you know when you're opening your first restaurant you want to do the best of everything right you want to do the best interiors get the best chefs get the best 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 of everything and all of that comes at a price so you know initially i think i overstretched my budgets a lot being uh, you know very new to it and i wish uh, you know now i wouldn't make that mistake again yes that makes sense do you feel like this concept that you're introducing in india is catching on i mean you know it would be very like i don't want to like boast and be like yes but um i do think that we've made somewhat of a mark in india because where are tiny restaurant without any chains in mumbai and you know to make it on an international list like the forbes list or you know to even win awards and all of these things i, I do feel like we you know we're doing this because we're resonating with someone out there there are people um, like me who look to eat clean who look to eat green who care about sustainability in their eating habits who want to eat ingredient forward foods so canny green definitely was one of the first restaurants to focus on ingredients instead of cuisine there are a bunch of other fabulous restaurants that are also focusing you know um, on this uh, putting more uh, light on our farmers and elevating uh, local produce so i definitely feel like canningin was one of the first ones definitely a very strong supporter of the movement yeah i get that now i know in many countries around the world restaurants have been forced to close due to the coronavirus pandemic how are you dealing with that what has this period been like for you so you know kati you know this we're actually we were in the middle of a launch of a new restaurant of my second restaurant and just before uh, we were about to launch unfortunately this virus hit us so we've had to delay that so currently um you know we've temporarily closed candy and green and the new place candy club you know and we've closed it for deliveries and uh, for dine in because you know i don't think it's safe for you know my community or my staff or anyone you know to be right now roaming the streets and the prime minister has asked for social distancing so i think all citizens should take that very very seriously in the meantime right now you know i turned vegan 5 months ago i've been focusing on that we've been uh, you know my mom and i are both vegan so we've been whipping up some nice vegan dishes trying new vegan cheese recipes today i made a very nice miso chickpea with a bowl which was pretty delicious and yeah with my free time i've been um, you know really using it to um, catch up with myself i pray and i meditate and i generally don't get to do that in my busy schedule so i've been very consistent with my meditating and praying and also been taking a lot of time to just you know brush up on some other skills so i've been taking some online courses to learn about stocks because i remember from you know my bu classes that you know you buy when the stocks are low so you know since i wanted to brush up on those skills i've been taking a couple of online courses so maybe i can you know start managing a portfolio of my own you know investing a little money growing well <laughs> perfect it sounds like you're setting yourself up for success the moment everything is back up and running we certainly wish you all the best and i'd like to thank you for being a member of the india leadership council and everything that you do to help us build strong connections among our alumni throughout india and we're so grateful to have you as part of the bu family thank you so much for um having me do this uh, you know i i was really missing uh, my friends at bu and my you know my teachers uh because when you have time you know you sort of tend to reminisce and this is a great way to sort of connect back with uh bu and uh, i'm so glad we got to do this and i can't wait to hear it i hope that if anyone's listening to this and considering bu that they actually go cuz it definitely changed my life in four years so <laughs> What a great way to end the podcast. I really appreciate your shout out to our future Terriers. Thank you again, Shada. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks again, Shada, for being part of the Proud to Be You podcast. 
All of us are rooting for your continued success, and I'm so grateful for the work you're doing as part of our India Leadership Council as well. If you would like to learn more about Shraddha and her business, please take a look at the links in the show notes of this episode. Nice job, Kati, and my thanks to Shraddha as well for being on the podcast. This was such a great interview, and if I ever find myself in Mumbai, which I certainly hope I do, I'll definitely give Candy and Green a try. On behalf of everyone on the BU Alumni Relations team, thanks so much for listening to Proud to Be You. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you find your episodes. I'm Jeff Murphy, and no matter where your path takes you, be proud to be you. The Proud to Be You podcast is produced by Boston University Alumni Relations. Our theme is from Jump and APM Music. To learn more about Proud to Be You, visit bu.edu slash alumni slash podcasts.